I'm not a Dodge guy, so I have no emotional attachment to this alternator that doesn't charge at idle. All right, today on Barkley Built Channel, we're gonna take this alternator, this nice Dodge alternator, and we're gonna put something reliable in here, something that's gonna charge proper. Um, Steven's not here, so now's the time to do it. But uh, we'll get working on this half ton here, and let's get going. So as you can see, I've brought Steven to the dark side. Got the old Chevy alternator. Um, I kind of got two brackets down here. We're gonna make one bracket out of two. So I'm just gonna pull this all apart. It looks like it does an awesome job. Oh yeah, I can guarantee it makes it look like I almost have skills, but I don't. <laughs> Anybody wanting an east, wondering about an Eastwood welder, go buy one. Because neither one of us is skilled in any way. See, that's pretty nice. I mean, for an amateur, that's a real nice weld. Yeah, it's a little screwy down there. Yeah, it's a little screwy in the middle out. too, but the beginning, is really nice there, in my opinion. You just turning your. I was switch back to the. Were you having trouble using the pedal? It is just really damn awkward about sitting, and that pedal kind of sneaks away on you. Oh yeah. That's one thing I'll say. If you get the Eastwood Take 200, you got to figure something with that pedal. It's kind of crappy, and it'll run away on you. So now that Stephen got the alternator bracket all welded up, uh, we gave it a coat of paint, but uh, I just got this on here and. I had some better ideas. I'm thinking about reusing this chunk of the old one too. And uh, I marked it here so that I got good swing. And I marked it level with the top of the mount we've already got in there. And basically what I need to do is I need to cut this here. Kind of like pie cut it and bend this up. And then uh, We'll weld it to the bracket too. I've got spaced out about where I need it. Uh, the only thing is I kind of got to bend the bracket a little just so I can get the alternator straight. It's just a little bit off kilter here, but let's get going on this. All right, here we are at a trusty little workbench here. Got the grinder with the wheel that's already coming apart. Don't be stupid like me, wear glasses. All right, so I don't have glasses, but I got Steven's welding helmet. So let's give this a try. So I'm hoping we can uh, make this work. We'll just clean these up a little. We'll change over to a grinding wheel here. Even better, we got a flap wheel. And of course, I grabbed the welding helmet, but I wasn't using it because I couldn't see anything. Oh well, I'll have to remember to bring some glasses before I'm totally blind. Let's go over to the welding bench, we'll tack these together and give them a try. All right, I'm just gonna get these tacked together using my uh, trusty welding flywheel here for support.
Now, Steven's not here, so I can do this without having long sleeves on. Plus, I'm just tacking it. Uh, I'm going to try tacking it without any uh, filler rod because apparently you don't need it to tack. I'm going to use I'm going to use filler rod. together. It's going to tack a little tack on the back side here too. Perfect. It's going to let, cool that off and we'll try it out. All right. I took it over there and uh, saw how it was going to fit. Um, I'm just going to tack it to the main bracket now and we'll see what it looks like. tack it I just put a bead on there without filler I don't think it's gonna matter too much I'm just gonna do the same on this side and we'll try and use the filler I'm just using the thumb trigger because we got the pedal disconnected right now because Steven's doing some uh, modifying You know what? For a 100% amateur, I'm pretty happy with that actually. I won't fully weld this end until after I get it in there and try it. I'm just going to cool this down. All right, I just got this bracket in here. I've got my bracket influencer 3000. If I need to give her a little tweak here or tweak there, let's throw this bad boy in. And of course I have to mount it backwards from how you would on a Chev, just because of the mounts on it. So I had to drill the threads out of this one, and it actually goes to the bottom now instead of up at the adjuster, but hey, it works. take this all back off. Okay. So I measured the alternator and I want six and a half center to center. Which is right there. That can't be right. Somewhere around that. It's only six. Let me go double check that alternator for me. that in the video where I stick the tungsten to it because if we deleted
on the video, there'd be no video left. I mean, if we deleted all our screw-ups. All right, looks good enough to me. I'm gonna do some really ugly welding here. So we'll just fast forward. So I feel like a real dum-dum. I did all that grinding and all the painting and stuff and apparently I was still on time lapse. So anyway, here's another coat of primer. Uh, using this sandable primer because I really like the way it fills the scratches and holes. Oh Steven, I'm telling you, this is going to be the nicest bracket I've made in this shop. Yeah. Until I make the next bracket, I think. Well, once, yeah. once we get the bench grinder and everything set up right. All right, let's get back at this harness. Um, now that we're bypassing the regulator for the alternator, because we're switching to the Chevy alternator that's internally regulated, um, I went through some schematics and did some searching on my phone for how we got to do this. Uh, this is the har harness that went to the alternator and it also went to the temp sensor. It had a heavy charge wire in it. By heavy, I mean like 10 gauge, which isn't gonna be enough for this alternator because I think this is, what's that, 65 amps, Steven? I think it's 65 and that Dodge was about 30, 35. Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter too much. We know that we gotta take the red and the green and we gotta put the Chevy style plug on the end. And we have to bypass the regulator essentially, so we'll just cut these two wires and we'll uh, connect them together and then we'll get everything loomed up nice because it should be ready to go in and we got some heavier loom so let's get at it if you ever want to know if you got your crimps good enough just do a tug test you don't have to be hercules here just give them a little tug make sure they're good Good thing a licensed mechanic is wiring your truck so that it doesn't light on fire. Wait, it's probably gonna. Oh yeah, I know. I mean, it is you. Yeah. Didn't say what kind of mechanic. Maybe I'm special mechanics. You're a mechanic. A mechanic. <laughs> So, 
there we have it. That is the new alternator harness. And it did have a burnt up pin in here, but it's for the wire I pulled out. It's the old charge wire. Uh, we're going to be putting something in a lot heavier. Uh, if anything, we're going to go overkill, hey, Steve-o? Yeah, no, because no, I'm no, not no, cool. No, I'm not cool with electrical fires. But anyway, that's that part. Let's get the rest of this harness all buttoned up and ready. This should be nice enough that even Steven would approve of it. Let's get it in the car. Truck, I guess, not car. So these are the schematics for that Dodge, for that wiring harness. And as you can see, I'm trying to follow this alternator wiring and read it because these are old enough, they're not in color and they're so blurry. It was a little tough, but uh, yeah, we took the old, field and uh, regulator wire and where they go into the old regulator here we bypass these and then we got to run our own power wire because I don't trust this tiny little charge wire but yeah I just thought you'd want to see these really nice diagrams here well uh while I've been doing the wiring, Steven's been over here just spacing this alternator out. Building our spacers, kind of getting the, the belt as straight as we can, getting the alternator straight. Been a little bit of tweaking brackets. Uh, we had to shave the alternator bracket down a little bit on the far side because the cooling fan was hitting it. Like the cooling fan on the alternator itself. Uh, what else you got going on, Steven? Well, that's about it for now. Get that going and then I'll hop into the interior and start doing the trap in there. All right. As soon as, uh, as soon as you're done out here, I'll get started laying in this harness. So there we have it. Aside from the belt, we have the alternator bracket done. Um, we got here today and Steven was fooling around with shimming the alternator out with our spacers we were building. And then he got mad and he bent and broke the, the bracket and I let him go do his thing and I come back and I clean it up and I had to do little bit of repairing on it and then I come up with the idea of using just threaded rod here and then I can use the threaded rod I can just tighten this nut or loosen this nut to bring the alternator in or out for our belt alignment and I think we've got it pretty darn close right now we won't really know till we get the right size belt and we get this thing started up but yeah so there you have it that is how we installed a GM internally regulated alternator on a Dodge engine in this truck. Thanks for watching guys. You know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. You don't have to, but it sure would be nice if you did. And as always, if you're going to drink beer, have EGD.